Christy Funk now joins us. And without further ado, what did you find? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, first of all, you guys already know this. You already know this. But I have to say, I was meeting this doctor for the first time. And you are an angel. I have to say that. And you said something to me that I later shared with my mother that just meant the world to me because you said to me, she gave you a gift. You know, your, sis your sister gave you a gift. And um, just in terms of my, uh, my sister didn't have any children. I have two boys. So just in terms of my own health and taking care of myself. But the, I shared that with my mom, just the gift in it all. And just thank you so much. You know, Robin, you're taking that gift and you're opening it and you're sharing it with the world mm -hmm. by being proactive and putting a voice and a face to a breast cancer story that's powerful and important. And the lesson here is that everybody needs proper screening. Right. So this is an important wake-up call for those who are sitting on the couch, 52, never Thank had you. a mammogram. Exactly. And I've got a yeah. friend of mine who I, I told you about, I think, briefly, who thinks that mammograms can cause breast cancer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to come and just, it just, I just wanted to shake her, you know, as a, you know, she, she's, I just want to set the record straight and you guys can do that, yeah. you know? So we, we have to dispel myths. Right. So yes, there's radiation in a mammogram, right. but you would have to get well over 20,000 mammograms to give your breast a radiation dose that would induce right. a cancer. Right. You're way more likely to have a cancer that right. could be diagnosed right. by the mammogram. And I've never had anybody, a doctor, when you said, Shh, put your arms up, and I've never had a doctor do that. Observe. The doctor that I'm seeing now, knowing that my sister you know, this has happened to her, still thought that a mammogram every year was good. You said I should get a mammogram now twice a year. What I said was, no. okay, so having a first degree relative okay. with premenopausal breast cancer mm -hmm. doubles your risk okay. above population. Mm -hmm. So population, 12.5%, you're hovering around one in four chance right. now, 25%. Right. With people over 20%, this is what I like to do. We get a mammogram and whole breast screening ultrasound, six months later, breast MRI. Okay. Rob, and I, I have to thank you for being so open and, and literally watching that exam obviously i'm male and don't get mammograms but you're you're very open and honest in that experience and i thought that you really did a service to a lot of people and i i understand you may be doing something additional an ultrasound in the next segment is that is that That's what's going to happen? Yeah. So let's talk <laughs> for a second. Why? So ultrasound sees things in a different way, as does MRI. That's why I like to do all these things when people are higher risk. So risk over 20%, add the ultrasound. Dense breasts. We grade density A through D. Your C yes. to D. Yes, I've been told that. So, yes. mm -hmm. Right, right. Exactly. So somewhere between 60 and 80% mm -hmm. of your breast tissue is like a white splotchy snowstorm mm -hmm. on mammogram. Mm -hmm. Cancer is always white. So if you have dense breasts on a mammogram, the cancer can get camouflaged. Hiding, and all hiding in there. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to have scared anybody. It was just, you know, you're getting your boobs squeezed. But it's, <laughs> it's nothing. You did it's nothing. squeal. <laughs> I did squeal loudly. And, and we do have to go to break. But when we come back, Robin is going to be finishing her exam with Dr. Christy Funk, including an ultrasound. Stick around.